these three so far, right? These three we covered so far. We'll go ahead with this today. Okay, we set. What is SAN? First of all, SAN is a storage area network. Okay. So, what it will give uh, you? Store uh, data into a block format. Okay. So, if you want to remember, remember the disadvantage of local storage in local storage what you can do you can create a vms and you can run the business but the disadvantage is once the host is down your vm also goes down right that is the reason we need network storage agree in network storage san is the high performance storage so we need san storage but the problem is there are some customers uh, at the financial if, if you look at the financial considerations uh, normal SAN product let's say is just on uh, Lehman numbers not less than 50 lakhs okay but the customer is looking at running only 50 VMs business media mid-range or small small or mid-range customer okay he has around four hosts and he want to run the business with 50 or 60 odd vms that's it and for that he cannot really spend 50 lakhs of sand storage so then what you suggest you suggest run in the local storage but again there's a problem right he cannot run it on local storage and he can purchase the sorry he cannot purchase the sand storage even then in that situation what you will do you need some alternate option right the alternate option is okay recently we have got lot many products in the market with the name called hyper converged infrastructure what is such i have also explained in the first sessions initial uh, basic sessions I have explained this topic. Okay, let's go to email this. Okay, if you look at, I have explained this topic if you remember. Or else in YouTube you have a videos on my channel. You can check it out later on. Okay, if you look at the traditional way, you have a sand storage and you have a normal network. You have a fiber channel network and your servers. So your normal server, your normal servers will access the storage like this, and customers will access the data like this. Okay. In converged, in converged, what happens? Everything is bundled by one vendor. Everything is supplied by one vendor. You have a SAM storage, and you have a switch, and you have a servers. Same as it is with the traditional storage, but only difference is. In this scenario, you have to contact one person for any problem. In this scenario, you have to contact multiple multiple persons like HP, who is the supplier of servers, and VMware, who is the supplier of software, and Cisco and Dell EMC. How many? Four or five different vendors you need to talk to. But same products, same products will be supplied by one vendor. It is easy for you to manage your business that is converged. Nothing to discuss more on this. Okay, let's move on to hyper converged. In this, your server and your storage. There is there is nothing called SAN storage. The servers normally what we discussed in earlier session. We have a server and it has some local storage, right? It has some local storage right 
the disadvantage is this local storage you can create a data store and you can keep the vm but the problem is if the host goes down data store goes down and vm goes down that's the issue but using vsan use using vsan technology these local data lo, sorry these local disk on each host can be converted into virtual sam okay understood you you no need to purchase in let's say i said one customer is there he require four host fine purchase four host So normally he has to purchase sand storage agree and configure sand storage to all the boxes with this overhead he is okay to purchase these four servers but he is not ready to purchase the storage okay in that case what you can do using vsan using vsan you <coughs> calculate how much storage you require for your business you can calculate it right yes if i want to run 50 vms on an average let's say 500 gig few vms are 500 gig few vms are 100 gig or some of them are some of them are around 10 tb or something <clears throat> considering everything your expected storage is 30 TB that is what the expectation is customer requires 30 TB for that you don't want to purchase any sand product so what we can do we how many hard disks that we can insert on this boss in each server maximum how many hard disks that you can insert Agree? I told you on the starting hardware session. Yes, yes. 16, 16 drives, right? Okay. So what you can do, you can purchase 14 into 1 TB SAS drives and 2 into 1 TB SSD drives. Fair enough? Means I'll put two blue ssds rest all rest all sas drives same so what is the total size what is the total size 14 into 4 56 tb 56 tb raw size right and 2 into 1 TB, 2 TB into 4. Remaining TB SSD. This is the raw capacity. So, what you can do by using vSAN, okay, might be my calculation is a little wrong, but practically it works in a such a way. You can create one common data store. <coughs> okay, you can create one common data store add all the hard disk into this okay so failover capacity or failover tolerance or fault tolerance of this i can say one host one host means means one host goes down it's okay i can still run, run the business so means at any point of time this much capacity will be in reserve let's minus 14 minus 13 how much 40 43 43 is the raw capacity 
thirteen will be in. Sorry. Uh, let's let's remove one one drive. Let's remove one one drive. One one drive means why why one one drive? Spare spare drive. If something goes wrong, immediately the spare drive will help in each server. Okay, so remove four drives. So it become fifty two TB rocket disk. It is there in the system, but we will not consider in the calculation. That means this is become thirteen. Understood? Yes. Okay. Now out of fifty two. Minus thirty. How much? So thirty nine TB raw capacity will be visible after removing overhead and all. You will see somewhere around thirty three TB. Thirty three TB data store. Means on the back end. Actually on the back end fifty two TB. But one host capacity will be in reserve, just like your RAID 5 n minus one. One hard disk capacity will will be in reserve, right? N minus one RAID 5. Yes. Okay. Similarly, here, if if you are considering one fault, or oh, it can tolerate one failure, means if one host goes down, my business should not interrupt. In that case, remove remove one. Host capacity from the calculation that will be in reserve always. Okay, but anyway, all the all the disk will be formatted. But the logic it works just like a RAID. Understood? So you will see after normally we will get somewhere around 39 TB is the raw capacity after formatting overhead and all. Okay, let's consider around 33 TB raw space you will get. Data store size is 33 TB. What is the actual size? 56. After considering all the failovers, after considering the overhead and considering the four spare drives and all, it become 33 TB. So matching with your matching with your criteria. Customer is asked for 30 TB. I gave him 33 TB. Happy? Okay. Yes. But the problem is, but the problem is, you don't require a SAN storage here. The problem is, everything is on local host only. Everything is on local host only. But, but what you do with this 8 TB? Okay. So let's say, for example, one data store. You have created one VM, one VM on top of this host. Where it will save? It is saved in this. Right? Is there any option? It will go and save in this data store only, right? Yes. Okay. Now, <clears throat> remember this. Remember this picture. Now, what I'm saying. In the in the diagram. Okay. Now, what I'm saying that all the four hosts in one switch. One switch. This is different. This is different. Take one cable, connect to switch. But you have a management, right? We have a customer data. Means here you have distributed switch. Here you have terminal port. This is okay, but I purchased one or two 10 GB cables, 10 GB network. This is understood. That that is different, and this network is different. 
so what happened this is one switch only remember this is one switch so in this it has oh my god it has 16 hard disk like this okay so what i did imagine i'm i'm drawing the data store down the side i have one common data store which is 33 db just like in the previous picture which came from this 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 logically right so if i create a vm if i create a vm this vm customer will come and access this vm like this okay but this vm is sitting on data store this data store is this data store this data store is visible on this 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 and all the four hosts you will see the data store agree yes so this vm is running on this data store but this data store is combination of 14 14 14 14 around 56 hard drives combination of 56 hard drives means your vm <clears throat> not necessarily it will save one it will save on the hard disk one of the hard disk on this host it can save on this hard disk as well who knows everything is managed by vsan right at that time whatever the data that customer is writing on this vm this go this will go on save on this possible hard disk There, there is no limitation right it you have one data store one data store is combination of 54 disk okay data store can write a data in any disk so this vm data is saved on this hard disk but when it is when customer is accessing the data he should not face any slowness he should not face any slowness so what you will do you have that you have that you remember you have the two ssds 1 TB here, 1 TB here, 1 TB here, and 2 1 TB disk, right? Out of 16, 2 are SSDs there. So, these 2 SSDs will be attached to this data store. All the 8 SSDs will be attached to this data store as a Here. This you call it as technically capacity This capacity tier is what actually customer is using cache means what will happen if this VM is requesting some data on this hard disk Okay, now frequently user is requesting the same data same data same data from this hard disk Okay, what happened? This data will be cached into this hard disk when the request came to the same from the same VM next time, so it will automatically pull from cache and give it to the customer. So what happens? This hard drive is ten times or at least five times slower than SSD. Correct? So that the performance will be increased. Frequently accessed data will be moved on to SSDs in each host so that if a, if some host or some some host is facing some issue or some slowness What happened when the customer is requesting the data from for any specific VM? If the data is residing on the other host not on the same host where the VM is running in that case Cache will help to improve the performance of the customer machine so means for these 14 drives this will act as a cache means if if these hard drives are performing slow and customer is facing some slowness just to avoid that whatever the data out of these 14 hard drives 10 TB data is written example or sorry 4 TB data is written example okay 
4 TB out of this 14 hard drives, 4 TB data is written so far. Out of 4 TB, 20 GB customer is asking every second, means very frequently, randomly, customer is asking the 20 GB. What it will do? The 20 GB data it will copy onto the cache. When the request came in for the next time, it will directly serve it from the cache. Understood? Irrespective of what VM it is. Right? Clear? How to test this? How to test this in our lab? If in, in, a, in real time, in, in a, the configuration is a little different. Okay, VMware, VMware has also got vSAN feature. With that, we can create this. Now, you people created three host. Can you tell me? Three host you created three host right yes okay all the three host has got three different hard drives 2 GB 4 GB 8 GB in our lab you remember yes. okay so what I will do I will take this 8 GB drives as a capacity okay and these 4 GB drives are there now on each on each host there is a 4 GB drives so these 4 GB drives I will treat it as a cache just like this example okay now 8 8 8 how much 24 right you should get around 22 or 23 GB data store and this will act as a cache this is what the configuration I should see in the lab very easy okay but uh, it the administration part and the configuration and the criteria and the performance tuning if you consider all these aspects vsan has a uh, separate administration part i can say or vsan is uh, altogether a big topic that you can spend at least 10 days to learn understood if you go to vmware vsan administration PDF, you will see around 200 page PDF. Let's see. This before we, the, we start with the lab. The lab is very simple. It will take hardly 10 minutes for me. Okay. VMware, vSAN, Active, Active, Documentation. Three days course, official three days course. VMware VSAN. Okay, I'm just giving you a just a hint or just an overview. I can say I'm not going in detail on VSAN administration. Understood? Yes. Very very big topic. You can see. Day one, day two, day three, and modules they have. They give multiple modules. You can spend some time on this. Okay. Later on, when you when you got the access, the login. What's the IP of your host you created, right? Of your host, any one IP at least. What is IP of your host? These host. Forty dot fifty one fifty two fifty three. Okay. Let me go back. Development cluster is still there. What I will do? I'll go to the development cluster and add host. What is the host? Forty dot fifty one. Right. One ninety two sixty eight fifty two. Right. Three. 
all the three hosts will try to add it. Let's see. <clears throat> VLAN or something, yeah. VLAN is wrong. Put it on VLAN port B. That was a mistake. Okay, that's working. If right, okay. 51 is already added and removed. That is the reason why it is not showing the because that is already added previously we have added once and removed it now everything is under cluster okay let me by default they will be in the maintenance mode you have to it from the maintenance mode. Okay, so click exit on all the three hosts. You have to do if you look at on the fifty one. There is one local disk man we need to delete that data store because i cannot this 8 gb is already formatted right okay let's see let's try to unmove the data store okay and this 8 gb is already formatted then if it is already formatted how you will use it in the vsan you cannot use it right so i need to delete this not even unmounting now let me put the host into maintenance mode again and do the maintenance task unmount let's see we are still getting the error is busy what it has does it have something false nothing man nothing it is inside <clears throat> let's try one more time otherwise i will add another 8 gb disk what's wrong with it It's not working. Let me go back and quickly assign another 8 GB to this. We'll leave that 8 GB local disk. This one, right? Edit settings. Another 8 GB I will add. Leave about that 8 GB. What we can do? That we can delete later on. That's not an issue. Okay, done. So let's see if it is automatically discovered over here or I still need to reboot the host. See, it's, it is not discovered.
report. Give me like two minutes, we'll reboot this host. Automatically, you will see two 8 GB drives here. This is SAN, SAN drives, Apple drives, and the SAN drives. This only local drives will be there, but one I have already formatted. If you go to other other host, it is not formatted. Okay, so let's wait. This is being rebooted. Close, go to the center, wait for maintenance mode. Exit from maintenance mode, and you see two 8 GB drives. Okay, now let's see if the existing also will. getting some error okay leave it we have another 8 gb right so now with the with this configuration we can configure we can configure remember the configuration we can configure 24 gb capacity and 12 gb caching how to do that let's see go to vcenter go to cluster go to cluster minimize configure if you minimize you will see option called vsan okay where in cluster even if you go to production cluster if you minimize all the options in the last you will see vsan by default it's turned off okay remember vsan is cluster level feature how many hosts that we can add into vsan cluster the number of hosts that which belongs to the cluster 64 right maximum 64 hosts that you can keep it in one cluster so you can configure vsan for how many hosts 64 how to do that let's see quickly Just go to services vsan is turned off configure single site cluster two host vsan cluster or stretched cluster okay each host is considered to reside in its own fault domain okay single site cluster and two hosts at one site and witness host at another site witness host contains only metadata of existing stretched cluster means across two different regions i'll say simple single site cluster for our lab demo next okay if you want to enable deduplication encryption compression no, I don't want to do any of these things. <coughs> Large scale cluster support. 32 nodes. Oh, I have only three nodes. No, no need to. No need to enable it. So if you look at it, it is automatically, it is automatically discovering the devices in each host. In each host so it's group by host if you look at on 51 on 51 two drives what it is suggesting one will be capacity tier another one will be cache tier and 4 gb automatically suggesting cache 8 gb automatically suggesting capacity same thing on all the host if you look at okay if you don't want to use 
this host to be added into the cluster we send, we send data store cluster or we send storage you can simply set do not claim so so that those two disk or this host is not part of vsan okay so cap capacity tag and cache tag is mandatory okay so if capacity tag 24 gb cache tag 12 gb okay next all the three host yes go back With the current configuration you can tolerate up to one failure that is what i'm saying right next finish that's it you'll see all the see it is creating a cluster okay it is creating a cluster if you go to data stores data stores You'll see it is on progress. Uh, that is in progress. It's uh, let us see. It is creating one cluster. Leave about this 8 GB one. Okay. Rest all it is creating one cluster. If you refresh, you'll see one 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 disk will be added. One one disk will be added so that it, it this capacity will keep on increasing. Creating disk group. Once the disk group is created, one one disk will be added from each host to this data store. And if you look at the file system format, vSAN. See, then you got 24 GB, 23.98. 3 into 8, 24. After overhead and all, 23.98. And after the format, after, after it, formatted the drive become 23.63 if you go to first host data stores you will see same thing under local one go to second you will see only SAN storage vSAN storage third only vSAN so what we did in earlier sessions in earlier sessions we have configured the storage from SAN some remote network storage this time this time we have configured sand storage using the local disk itself understood okay but what is the what is the advantage for for medium and small customers okay without spending too much of expenditure or too much of capital in sand products that is one advantage okay why we need the network storage from day after tomorrow onwards from monday onwards we'll do the ha drl safety and update manager all these things uh, all these testings so that that time you will understand why we need this distributed switch why we need this network storage or sand storage all these things that will come to know the usage or the significance of for any of those functions to work properly we need proper network configuration and SAN storage or you can call it a shared storage not even a SAN vSAN is the SAN, vSAN is not a SAN storage right vSAN is local storage only but it vSAN technology helped us to create shared data store across all the host if the data store is shared across all the host you can achieve the high availability functionality Understand? Yes. Okay. Vivek, any questions? Yes, he is on mute. No problem. Any questions from you? No, sir. Okay. Let me stop here. Let me stop here. You can watch this video.